Hello, I'm now going to talk about exception handling, which is sometimes overlooked, I think, in learning programming, but it's really key if you want to make a robust and readable program. Now, an exception is an event which occurs during the execution of a program that disrupts the normal flow of a program's instructions. Now, the difference between exceptions and errors semantically is very slight. They're you know, very similar. You could argue an exception is really a a type or subset of an error. I suppose the difference is some errors occur syntactically and will prevent your code from even running. You know, if you misspell a keyword or forget a colon or a quote mark or something like that, that could stop it running full stop. And some errors are logic errors, which the code works, but just not as you expect it to. An exception is only ever going to be a runtime error. The side difference is an exception really you should be handling. Some errors are a bit outside your control and you can't really take the blame f for them. For example, a runtime error could be the OS crashes or it could be the computer runs out of memory because another program is hogging the RAM. Things which aren't really your fault. But exceptions are things like an error where you try and divide by zero when you overflow, perhaps doing some addition or shifting maybe in file handling where you try and access a file which can't be found, maybe when you try and convert between different data types. Often this happens where you're trying to maybe deal with integers and the user types in a string instead. These are exceptions, they're not just runtime errors. They are runtime errors, but they are exceptions because really you should be trying to manage these. Sometimes exceptions can't really be avoided. Some of these you should be able to manage within your code, but they might occur just in one time and you might not always have much control over it. But all of them would normally terminate the program, so they would be fatal errors. Errors which occur and suddenly your code is finished and your program has crashed, which are not ideal, obviously. But exceptions are things which you should really handle, as I say, things which are not serious enough to warrant your program having a hard crash where it shuts down and loses everything you should be able to manage them more carefully using exception handling. Now the idea here is to try and provide some alternative code which can be executed should an exception occur during runtime. And the word we use, we use for an exception occurring is it's being raised. If it's being raised, it means one of these runtime errors have been detected. So, you know, the idea is we have a normal flow where our code is going through pretty normally. Suddenly we have this issue Maybe you try and divide by zero, maybe you try and access a file which doesn't exist, like I gave examples of. Instead of just crashing and us finishing, we should have some code which we can jump to, which handles it, and we can continue with our program afterwards. Now this code is called a handler. So the handler code is usually separate to your, your normal part of your program. So we can say it's expressed out of line. So not immediately in the same area as your normal code, you jump to it when you have an exception. Now, the reason why we try and separate it is to try and, well, not affect the readability of your normal part of your program. Readability is how easily you can understand the code. And if you've got loads of error, error detection code within your normal code, that can get a little bit cluttered and hard to understand. So we try and separate it as much as we can. Now, it can get very cluttered because if you're trying to write loads of if statements or loads of while loops to try and check for every single possible error, that is a lot and you can't always predict every single possible exception right some of the exceptions are so specific and so rare that actually it's going to be hard for you to have an if statement checking for it or a while loop to try and validate it it's not always possible and so it's better in this case to just create a more generic handler which is just somewhere else in your code which you can jump to in case a obscure exception happens and this is used to prevent a hard crash a hard crash being where your program itself is a fatal error it shuts down and potentially stuff gets lost right a soft crash is where an error happens you handle it you try and recover whatever data you've got and then it shuts down in a more safe manner now just to show you an example in python this is a two-line program where i'm taking input from a user i want a number here and I'm gonna take 100 and divide 100 by that input. Now, it might be worth you pausing for a second thinking about what exceptions could occur with this code. What runtime errors could happen? 
Well, I can think of two possible exceptions here. You may be able to think of more. I've lost here. But two main ones which we should probably, if we're being a good programmer, we should handle are things like dividing by zero. So if the user types in zero, as they have in this output, we can't divide by zero. And so the computer will raise an exception and it will crash my program unless I handle it properly. Another exception would be if the user types in a word and that'll break it because we can't convert a string to a decimal number to a float. Again, this would be fatal unless I handled it. Now, sometimes we don't actually have to write a out of line handler to deal with these exceptions. You could handle it, quote unquote, in line, maybe through validation. So here, for example, one of our exceptions was where we try and divide by zero. And we can counter that just by having a while loop to try and validate the input and make sure the input is never going to be zero. If they type in zero, it'll just keep asking until they type in a number not zero. So that doesn't cause my program to crash, but that's a little bit ugly. I mean, the code gets a little bit more complex. And actually, my first, uh, my second exception here about converting from a string to a float, I can't think of a, an easy way to do that in Python as validation, I've got to say. An integer you can validate, but not a float, as far as I can think, or at least you can't easily. So actually, I think it's better and certainly more readable to use a separate handler to deal with this. And in Python and in most languages, you do this by adding a separate block of code in Python called a try block. So the try keyword sort of gives you a relatively safe space to write your normal code. So try is your normal flow and accept is your handler code. So accept only gets ran if an exception occurs in your try block. So the try block is kind of a safe space. If an error occurs, it won't crash straight away it'll jump to accept and run the code and accept instead. So with this code, if I now typed in zero again, instead of getting divided by zero error, I just get an exception occurred and the program can continue after that point without it fully crashing. Same idea too, if I typed in hello, we get the same message again. So really that is a more generic handler which can deal with any possible exception which can occur in the try block. We can get more specific so most languages let you catch specific exceptions too and sort of customize what you are going to do when you have that exception. The word catch is another word used here for the accept block. So if you catch an exception, you are handling it and you're jumping to your handler to do that. So here I've got three accept blocks with specific names. So if I typed in zero, it would jump to the zero division error block and give a customized message for that. I've also added a if statement in the try block here where I'm checking to see if divisor is less than zero. And if it is, I am raising my own exception. So you can sometimes throw or raise your own exception. So a number being less than zero is not a, a normal error in Python because that's perfectly fine. But if you want it to be an exception, you can raise it yourself and pass a customized message to the handler. So if I say typed in minus five here, what happens is I will raise an exception. It will ignore the rest of the try block and jump down to the handler and give a, a more specific message based on what I have passed to the handler. Now, in this example, I think the first two except blocks are quite useful. This third block here is I think a bad idea because your code gets quite messy and you're now jumping around, which is never a great thing for program flow. But you can do that, you can generate your own exceptions if you particularly wanted to. So that is an example in Python. There is more to know. There are a few more blocks which you can use like finally and else. So if you are learning Python, I'd suggest you go and have a look into this and play around in some more detail. If you're learning another language, please make sure you are able to do basic exception handling in that language. There'll be lots of resources online to help you do this.